everyone welcome back to my channel today we are making a tiny foundation paper piece butterfly and I will be sharing all of my top tips for making that and for doing tiny piecing it's so fun it's so rewarding you can make them into the cutest things so let's get into it okay so let's begin with the tutorial so I have printed out my three inch butterfly from my take foot take flight pattern and the most important thing is to make sure the one inch test block actually measures one inch so just take your ruler and you can put it over it and you can see that that's perfect if you have um, a bigger or smaller test block you need to reprint it I have instructions in my pattern on how to make sure you're printing it correctly but basically just make sure your printer settings are all on scale 100 percent um, because printers like to think they know what size to print it at um, but oftentimes they will print it off bigger or smaller which will affect their overall size so once you make sure that that is correctly measured we can go ahead and cut it out so for my patterns you just cut along the dotted line Okay, now that we have our templates all cut out, you wanna also cut out your fabrics. So for this one, we just need three different fabrics. Unless you wanna go super scrappy, then just do whatever you please. Um, it's yours to make as custom as you want. So the number one tip I have for foundation paper piecing is to cut bigger than the size you need. Um, if it's the first piece in your template, you can get away with it being um, pretty equal to the size of this but if it's any other si any other piece than that definitely cut it bigger than you think um, because that will save you down the road from having to unpick and cut a new piece um, and you can always trim off the excess when it's too big um, so you can see for these I'm using these for these small pieces F2 um, I cut them quite a bit bigger um, just to make sure you give yourself some room and to account for the different angles you'll be doing. So I have all my pieces cut out, my background and my foreground fabric, and I've given them a nice press. Let's go over to the sewing machine and I'll share some more okay, tips. Okay, so my first tip for foundation paper piecing is to get one of these. In my video where I share my, the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do foundation paper piecing, I didn't have one of these. I just had my iron, which works totally fine, but this will save you a lot of time and a lot of up and down. This, the thing has rubbed off because I've used it so much, but it's Singer. Um, I got it off Amazon for $8, I think, and it is a game changer. So I am one of those people that doesn't like to invest in <laughs> unnecessary tools, but this is 1000% necessary. I love this. I love this. I love this. So let's go ahead and start. When you are doing tiny foundation paper piecing, like I said, this is a pretty small template. Um, I'm going to take my stitch length. You can't see, but I'm going to take it down to one. So that is very small. You could do, I would say one to 1.2 is perfect. Regular foundation paper piecing, I would do 1.5 to 1.8. So let's go ahead and start. So you can see in this one, we need F1 as the first piece, which is part of the wing. And for the wing, I am using this floral fabric. Um, I do have a light box, but it's easy as well to just use the light from your machine or a light from the window. Um, so you can get creative with your light. You don't have to um, pay a lot of money for a light box. But you have your paper right side down and then you're gonna have your piece of fabric right side up, your first piece. Use your light to kind of see where you need to position it. We will be stitching on this line right there. So go ahead and put it like about a quarter inch above that line. Then you are going to take your F2 fabric, which is the outline of the wing, which is the star fabric I have. And we are going to lay these right sides together, lining up that line. Then you're going to flip it over. And if you want, you can go ahead and put a pin in this. Um, but 
I'm not going to since it's such a tiny template and piece I can hold it easily enough with my hands but usually I do like to put a pin in it. So we're going to take it to our machine, put your needle down. Since these are tinier spaces, lines to be sewing on, I definitely recommend front stitching and back stitching at the front and end of your line. And it is important to go relatively slow. And once you get to the end, back stitch. Now let me show you the magic of this seam roller. You just put your push your seam down, and you can go ahead and roll that firmly. And then there you go, it's pressed open. How handy is that? So it saves us a trip to our iron, which is super nice. We will be cutting a quarter inch from the next line, away from the next line we will be sewing, which you can see is this dark black line right here. Um, so you could go ahead and fold your template up and then trim with the rotary cutter um, a quarter inch away. Since we are doing tiny piecing, you could even trim it as small as an eighth of an inch to help reduce the seam bulk, um, but I still stick to a quarter inch to make sure that my seams stay nice and intact. Um, but since I can see just fine with this light, I just kind of take my scissors and go under the template and then trim it a quarter inch away from that line. So you can see there it's still the maintained that quarter inch distance. So now what you're going to do is you're going to flip this back over. Our next one is F3, which is a background piece. So go ahead and take your background fabric. You're going to make sure that it is the right size. So like I said, the light source really helps with that. Um, you also want to account for any angles you have or flipping it over, over. Since this is an angled piece, I'm going to angle mine slightly above more so on this side than this side because it'll be flipping over. And if I put it down here, I would flip it over and we might lose this edge over here. So I just move it up slightly and this just takes practice and um, knowing what the fabric's going to do. So once we have that, go ahead and stitch on that black line. And we are going to just open that seam with small tiny piecing. Um, it's easy to get it skewed um, if you're not really accurate with your ironing or seam rolling. So I like to just do a quick finger press along that seam just to make sure that I am pressing it in the direction of the stitch line um, instead of maybe accidentally having some overhang or um, skewing it in that way. So that helps a lot to maintain those um, straight lines. So now we have over here F4, so I'm just going to, since we have a lot of extra fabric, I'm just going to cut it off along here. Um, and then F4, I can see, I'm just going to go under and trim like that. So then you can see in the light, I still have that quarter inch underneath. Um, but that F4 is a background piece, so let's go ahead and get one of those and line it up right sides together, flip it over, and you are going to stitch on that stitch line. Now if you want to stitch past this outer black line, you totally can. Um, in some cases it does make your seams bulkier though, which is a problem for small tiny piecing. Um, so I did go a tad over here, it won't matter in the long run, but if I had a really small piece I wouldn't want to go over because like I said it would make your seams too bulky. So we're going to finger press that open and then just roll that. We're going to go over here and do F5. I'm going to bring my piece back and just cut like that. 
I keep a trash can right next to me so I can clean up as I go. And let's get one of these. If you need to check your piece, just hold it up to your light source. I can see that that is going to be totally fine. And we're going to stitch down. Open that up. Okay, so now we have our first template piece, so I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these and then I'll meet you at the cutting mat. I wanted to show you this piece. It is very, very tiny from B1 to B2 for the tip of the butterfly body. Um, so it is very important that you sew on that line and I definitely do a front and back stitch at the beginning and end, but I want to show you why I finger press because sometimes with really small lines like that it's hard to figure out where they are so I could easily press it like this or like this and both would be wrong and wouldn't give me that definitive line um, so I just feel where the stitch line is maybe bring it back a little bit and then give it a good press with my fingers before doing this. So that's when it's really important to make sure you press within that stitch line and then you can continue on. Okay, now that I have my template pieces all pieced, I'm gonna take these to my cutting table and I'm going to trim them just right along the dotted line right outside so you don't have to cut on paper and um, give them a good press and I will meet you back here. Okay, now that we have them all trimmed, on all of my foundation paper piece patterns, I include directions for which seam you're gonna sew to which template. Um, so this is letter B and it says this one goes to C. So I'm just gonna look for C, which is right here, and you can see they go together. So with any FPP, but especially for tiny FPP, there's no place to hide if your seams don't line up um, because we are wanting really nice points and edges with the wings and the body to line up. So you just wanna make sure, and I use my light source, that your this, li this black line is lining up with this black line. Um, because this is the line we sew on, it's our quarter inch seam allowance for that FPP. So just make sure you've got them lined up here really nicely. And you can put a pin in them if you want and then go ahead and take it to your um, sewing machine and sew on that thick black line. Okay, so I am very happy with that. Um, you can see our points match up. I just need to iron this little background piece down. Um, but with FVP and anything in general, if you need to seam rip and take it out and try again, um, there is absolutely no harm in that. So don't worry at all. at all if you need to do that. I definitely need to do that every once in a while and um, there's no shame in that. So. Now that we've done that one, I like to finger press my seam open. With these tinies, it's important to press them open um, instead of both going to one side. And then your seam roller is perfect for that again. And then we are going to get letter A, which is this one, and flip it over, line it up. and take it to your machine.
Now with this tiny piecing, um, you'll see that if I keep sewing, I would sew right over that um, pressed seam. So I'm going to refold it back over so that I can sew, sorry, it's like shaking. But so I can sew, continue sewing on this black line without sewing over this, and then we'll refold it back over after. Okay, perfect. So you can always double check. See, I can see that I sewed on that line and then sewed on that line. So perfect. Um, and now we can open this one back up and see how these are very small. So do what's going to, and they're gonna clasp together. Um, do whatever you prefer. These two in the middle can't both be opened. Um, so definitely open one, but if you run into that, then it's not a big deal if you need to fold one over to its side. Um, typically I do try to make them all lay open, um, but if you're unable to do that, then just stick with doing that. Okay, now that we have our top and bottom piece, we are going to put them together. So for this butterfly, the trick is to get let me see if I can show you. You want the um, bodies, the top body and the bottom body to line up. Um, and it should achieve that if you just line these up. Um, so sometimes your two pieces may not um, match up. And if you're having that difficulty, it may be because your quarter inch seam allowance didn't hit every time. Um, Sometimes if you do a quarter inch seam allowance on the top piece, but you are slightly off on this on the bottom piece, then it re will result in a slightly larger or smaller section. So if you're finding that they don't match up, just go back and see if you hit the line on every one. And if you didn't, then go ahead and seam rip and redo that and then they will line up perfectly. Now before I sew it together, since this is a tiny template, I'm going to go ahead and actually remove these pieces. I actually did sew these two together and then I forgot that I wanted to take them out. Um, so I seam ripped it real quick. But since it's a tiny little um, three inch block, when I sewed these two together before taking out the paper and opened it up, it just made for a super bulky seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and just seam rip this um, paper out right here. Now you totally don't have to, it's just personal preference. If you're confident that you can um, not have the black line to follow for that quarter inch seam allowance, then take it out. Um, but if you need the black line to make sure to guarantee that you get that quarter inch seam allowance, then um, you can leave it in. So now that I've taken that out, that's just going to make for a super not so bulky seam. And since I'd already sewed it, um, it's tearing off really easy because it's already perforated, but there we go. Okay. And now I do still see where I need to sew my quarter inch seam right along there. Okay. So line these up again and we are going to sew it down. And perfect we got the body exactly where we want it and everything looks perfect so now you can give this a good press again you can remove the papers just by tearing them out since we did such a tiny stitch length they will basically take themselves out which is nice give it a good press I like to starch these um, after I've taken the papers out because since lots of scrappy pieces were cut on the bias it could it makes them um, easy to stretch and warp so I like to give it a good press um, but anyway there is our finished block thank you guys so much for watching this video where we made this tiny three and a half inch 
butterfly. So it's three inch finished, three and a half inch unfinished. So stay tuned for next week's video where we make these FPP blocks into a basic zipper pouch. Um, if you like these videos, please subscribe and like, and let me know in the comments if there's any other type of videos you want to see. But thanks for joining and I'll see you guys next week.